Welcome to Family Business World. I'm your host, Dr. Dale Caldwell, and I have some wonderful guests. As I always do, these are special friends. I have Janet Werner. Janet, welcome. Uh, a VP Thank of you. Strategic Influence, so I work closely with Janet, and John Griffith of Griffith Training Consultants. John, you're becoming, you're becoming a very good friend. Uh, welcome to you as well. Thank you. The, uh, good to be with you, Dale. Well, first, as always, I, I want my, my, my audience to really get to know the people behind the business. So, Janet, tell me a little bit about yourself. Where were you born, and, and how did you get to this point? Well, thank you, Dale. I am a Jersey girl. Mm -hmm. I grew up in, um, in Bergen County, and, I, you know, I started my career as a teacher. I was a teacher with 6th, oh. 7th, and 8th graders. And then I went on to um, my master's in counseling, and those two uh, degrees and elements brought me into corporate yeah. uh, training. Right. So I was really a teacher in corporate. Um, and then, you know, the business that I started serving most of New Jersey corporations was launched from that. You know, I'm a teacher at heart and a counselor at heart, so now I'm a coach. <laughs> well, it's, it's one, and you're extraordinary. We're going to talk about your dialogue process, which is a, a, a fantastic. But, John, it, it's, you know, we are getting to know each other, but I've just been so impressed with you and your background. Well, thank you, Dale. Uh, the feeling is definitely mutual. So, uh, background wise, I grew up in a small town in Georgia, Newton, Georgia, and we had a family business. And we had that for 29 years, so I learned a ton that way. But when I graduated from college, I began working toward being a professional actor and singer, and I did that for many years. It was in 1999 that I got into corporate training and coaching, and have been working in that ever since. I usually work with higher level leaders. It's been mostly in very large corporations, and I work on helping them enhance their leadership capabilities. And I just love helping them clarify what they bring to the table, what gifts they have, and helping them express those as fully as possible. And that benefits them and whatever organization they're serving. I've also worked with nonprofits. Well, again, and, and you're extraordinary at it, but what, what was the family business? Say a little bit for the audience about the, the, yeah, what, what, what kind of business was it? Well, if you know about the South, Coca-Cola is king in Atlanta. The town I grew up in is about an hour from Atlanta. Okay. And everything that's fizzy and sweet is called a Coke in the South. Yeah, Just right, like right. everything that you, wet, you blow your nose into is a Kleenex right, everywhere right, else. Right. Well, my father bought a failing Pepsi plant, oh, right. Pepsi bottling company, uh -huh. and, um, and struggled through the, the tough times and made a real success of it until we sold it 29 years later. Really? Uh, I was... Or, uh, he bought it four years before I was born. So it was a Pepsi. So I grew it was a, up talking family business every day around the table. Well, it was a Pepsi plant, a Pepsi business. Yes. In, in, so we, in Georgia, we, we bottled the drinks and wow. we sold them to all the stores for them to sell to all their customers. That's amazing. That's amazing. The, so Janet, uh, let, let's talk about the, the the consulting work you do. You really are becoming a national expert in this process called dialogue. And um, yes. uh, talk, talk a little bit about that. What's uh, what, what what is that all about? So um, I'll do the brief and then maybe, you know, start to share some examples. Mm -hmm. um, the dialogue uh, project uh, came out in the 1990s from MIT. Mm -hmm. And I really paid attention to it because it had that institution's, you know, reputation for studying and offering tools that are, you know, reliable and powerful. Um, so they brought that out. Some people might know it from uh, Peter Senge's work in the fifth discipline. Mm -hmm. But I brought it out in the 90s to large corporations, and then really over the last decade, more to small family-owned businesses, and I can share some examples. Uh, the dialogue process is, is very simple to begin with. It's asking everybody to stop and pause, mm. which, is, which is sort of a mantra now you know, in today's uh, world. So we stop and pause, but then what are we doing in the pause? We're really listening. We're not thinking about what to say. We're actually really listening to the other members in the group. And then we're using assumption language. Mm -hmm. And the when, I, when we work with small family businesses, it's people are starting to use that language even when I'm not there. And it makes a, a difference in how people really hear and check facts, uh, manage their emotions, and we start to get through conversations, especially when an owner, and one example, I have the daughter of the owner sitting in the room, and um, they can be very challenging meetings, but the dialogue process has started to help people slow down and really hear. 
Well, we'll talk a little more about that. We do a lot of work with, with family conflict. That's the, the Achilles heel of family businesses, is this family conflict, yes. that it's business as well as family issues on top of it. But, but John, tell me a little bit about your, your practice. You've been very, very successful. Where have you focused your work? My work naturally grew in large corporations because when I first started uh, uh, coming out of acting, I didn't have corporate uh, contacts. Mm -hmm. Uh, most people who do this kind of work will, will work internally before they go and start their own business. And I didn't have that. So I subcontracted with several other training firms, and that's what started my work because they had large clients. And so I would work within those large clients and then eventually got enough of my own work to not subcontract any longer. Mm -hmm. So um, the focuses have been helping leaders connect much more powerfully with the people they are intended to lead mm -hmm. so that they're so the people really want to follow them and and a lot of it's around communication because that's a key pipeline so i've done a, a lot of work on leadership presence how, how does one really connect with people and that includes deep listening it includes stopping the mind chatter and thinking you have all the answers in order to find out where they are you really can't lead someone to you find out where their hand is to help them move to a new place so well, well, it's stopping of, your own agenda see that that's uh, that's a great point because one of the one of the things i've learned in my 25 years of, of consulting is that every problem comes down to a communication problem and you both <laughs> are really dealing in, in really innovative new ways ways that family businesses small businesses and big businesses can deal with communication. Because if you don't have effective communication, you don't have a, a, a successful business, or at least a business as successful as it could be. So Janet, talk, I'd love to hear some of the examples that, you've, uh, that you were mentioning for family businesses. So yeah, I'll, I'll do one at a time, but I want to also connect, you know, why are John and I here you know, together? Mm -hmm. you know, because our individual businesses are now growing and evolving into a collaboration. Yep. And we'll talk about the different stages. John and I are collaborating to serve you know new jersey family businesses and small businesses and then we'll add in uh, the other elements uh, with you dale mm -hmm. so um, one recent example um, i was working with a medical device company you know long-term family owned uh, that also has adult children working in the company and we brought sales managers from the whole region you know, the, the, the nation and the regional sales managers came together and they have been historically just can't get on the same page, can't implement the strategies they come up with. Um, and I was brought in, you know, by the owner so that we could slow it down. And the, the outcome was get my people on the same page. Um, one of the greatest impacts was with the owner mm -hmm. that the process that we offered the dialogue got her to slow down and really hear it uh, moved the daughter who was a manager to a place where she was heard. And it was very emotional in the beginning. Um, but the dialogue process, checking assumptions, stopping and pausing, actually, in her own words, you know, my voice was finally heard with my mother in the room. Mm -hmm. And then their sales managers, you know, about eight, nine of them, were also used to moving very, very fast. And they had to slow down to truly hear and check assumptions. In three meetings, they were, they, shifted their strategy, they wrote it down, and they started implementing a process that, you know, for years they weren't able to do. So that, that's one. We have a few that, others. That is, that is fantastic. And as the audience knows, I'm, I'm the executive director of the Fairleigh Dickinson University Rothman Institute of Innovation and Entrepreneurship. Uh, but I also have uh, consulting, and so strategic influence, working with Janet and now John, um, is really looking at, uh, at these issues around communication, around leadership, and in the family business world, so many family businesses don't know where to turn. They don't have, know who to talk to. They don't know how to, to, to kind of cut through the family challenges to become successful uh, businesses. Um, uh, John, uh, talk to me a little bit about your thoughts about what family businesses can do and, and, and to become that much more effective. Well, I think um, you alluded to it early when you were talking about how family business challenges because it's family and business can be really thorny mm -hmm. and um and the emotional ties are so powerful and the expectations unspoken expectations are often so present without people really even knowing they are and even if they do know they are they often don't feel 
capable, armed with how to deal with them. And they probably, you know, many might resist going to family therapy to deal with it. So, so there are other ways. Um, what popped into my head, one thing that popped into my head was your, your illustration, Dale, of, of the hidden part, the iceberg. Mm-hmm. And the hidden part for family business can be all of those expectations that have developed over years and thoughts and some want to be involved, some don't want to be involved, some feel like they've been slighted. There are all kinds of, of cross currents. So I think the dialogue process offers a very different way to approach this that doesn't require enormous amounts of um, personal regulation. You don't have to come to it having having um, learned all kinds of emotional intelligence things. Is it good to know those things? Absolutely, but sometimes that can be a long-term process. Right. But the dialogue process allows us to help people have the right kinds of conversations and gain awareness from experiencing the conversation and ex- through the discipline of the dialogue. So um, I think it can be a really powerful tool to help them shift how they see each other and how they interact very quickly. And then they can grow from that. Their awareness can grow from that and it can have a trail of, of better interaction. Well, well this approach is, is valuable in any environment at any time. However, now we're dealing with this pandemic, which has gone on much longer than anybody thought. And, and it, it seems like in some places it's getting even worse. And so, so talk a little bit about why this dialogue process is more important now than ever before in, in history. Janet? Would you? Yeah, um, I think that's a great lead into, you know, a lot of these things work over the years and time tested. But now, you know, there was a lot more emotion um either behind the scenes or right out inside you know business meetings a lot more sensitivity um and you know that includes the business owner as well so and and right now the business owner the family business owner is is concerned about safety bringing their people back you know bringing some back changing the physical layout and so when it comes to the human relations and even race relations, because that's another agenda that's brought up, um, it's almost too much for that owner to handle. So we really go and partner and say, we're, we're going to care for the emotions of your employees in, in a very efficient way, because they don't have time for, you know, lots of long business right. therapy. Right. Um, so we facilitate conversations and we just make it easier, you know, from the first meeting to the last. Um, so. You know, that's to me, partnering and taking that off the, the shoulders of the owner and, and knowing that we're on his team or her team, um, and they actually start to see results that week. We start to see emotions turn down. Uh, we start to see more logical thinking, even out of the box thinking, innovative thinking. And all of a sudden people are you know, saying, oh, the, you know, the silence isn't so deafening. I, I actually can express my voice and you actually can hear me. Um, so I would say we make meetings and the thought process and emotions on all the issues, COVID, race relations, returning to work. Uh, we just we, we make it easier and doable, and they actually start seeing results in that first day. Exactly, in a very short period of time. Well, we're at the halfway point. We're about to take a break, and when we come back, we're going to pick up that conversation about why this is so important now. Today's show is sponsored by Dr. Jacqueline. Take charge of your life personally, financially, and professionally. Visit drjacqueline.com to book an appointment today. 
Hey everybody, my name is Ralph Graves Jr. I'm the host of the Ralph Graves Jr. Show, and I wanna invite you to pick up my book, Unstoppable. I wrote a book called Unstoppable. It's, it's seven universal laws that will transform how you pursue and achieve success. The one thing that my 20 years of law enforcement has taught me is that no matter who you are, we are all governed by universal laws, like gravity. But in this book, we're gonna talk about laws like the law of forgiveness, laws like the law of control, the law of intelligent practice, the law of expectancy. I was able to see how those, no matter what their background was, those who, who identified and, and treated these laws with respect, they were able to go on and lead successful lives. So pick up this book and you can go ahead and pick it up at amazon.com, barnesandnoble.com, ralphgravesjr.com, where, um, anywhere where fine books are sold. Thank you. There you go, Richard. Oh! Is that too hard for you? No. Is it too hard for you? Woo! We're playing catch now. <clears throat> oh, shit. What do I want to be when I grow up? Maybe a musician? A veterinarian? Maybe an equestrian? Mommy? Well, why not be all these things and more? Consider joining me, Dr. V, with friends and colleagues as we explore a wide range of topics together. V is for variety here on RVN TV. Welcome back to Family Business World. I'm your host, Dr. Dale Caldwell. I was talking to Janet Werner first about why this dialogue process, this innovative dialogue process is important. And John Griffith um, had some, some incredible insights to really talk about this. But, but, but I want to come back and pick up on that. John, you know, why, say a little more about why this is so important now as, as family and other businesses are trying to get back into the new normal. Um. Janet mentioned uh, the, that most people walking around today because of the complications of COVID and uh, human relations challenges we're going through, there's a level of um, upset, irritation, fear, uncertainty, lack of clarity that makes it very difficult, I think, for people to process what they want to do, how to do it, and that sort of thing. So, so something like dialogue that can help unlock some of the feelings and without it being it's not a regurgitation process at all it is a very productive way for people to hear one another's perspectives so there's a real clear discipline around this it's not fluffy in the least and one of the things as janet was talking about how it's used and that sort of thing in the last segment that occurred to me was one of the reasons i wanted to work with janet is because she is a master at this mm. Yep. And she's also fearless about it. So um, it's not that it, the discipline does help people be less fearful. It really does. Yes. It, yes. It, it has that power. And so I appreciate that. And yet you have to have someone who has tried that path before to say, this works this way and the outcome will be incredibly helpful. And Janet has been there. So I worked very similarly naturally for years with my coaching clients, with teams, sales teams, with large organizations, two teams couldn't see eye to eye. I used a lot of the same kinds of principles that underlie the dialogue process. So that's another reason we have complementary skills and backgrounds. Uh, but, but really focusing on it today, I think, yeah, the dialogue process, it, one of the greatest benefits is that it really starts with hearts, your, your heart response, mm. as opposed to your head. Right. And I think right now our heads are kind of reeling right. in many ways. And the dialogue process invites us into a heart response that balances out the racing mind where the fear gets uh, its own momentum. And so I think that with the, starting with the heart, we affect a bit of a balance that is incredibly helpful. And we get to the point of wisdom which is what we would prefer as we're working with businesses or individuals. 
Well, well that's one. I mean, and, 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 and I've witnessed. You know, let me let me embarrass Janet a little bit. I've witnessed and participated in in her masterful structured dialogue sessions. And I think it's important for the audience to know these are these aren't dialogue. Just uh, these are structured dialogue sessions that that really are very, very effective. And, and Dan, I'm going to turn it to you. But before, give them the website. What, um, if, if somebody wants to get in touch and learn about this and is having some family business problems, et cetera, what website should they go to to, to reach out to you? So um, I will say easily, we're both on LinkedIn, and they can find us, you know, our names. But we're operating under youhavemyword.com. And it starts with the letter U. You have my word .com. Oh, That's the perfect name and for this. You, the perfect name. But you have my word .com. I'm telling you, this this process is is outstanding. But Janet, say say a little more about why this is important at, at this particular time, and how it's different than yeah, traditional dialogue. Yeah, I'll build on on what was said already. Um, is the cultivation of mastery over this really happened over 20 and 30 years mm. and um, it always has been useful in good times and also conflict now um, where emotions are running high i like the word fearless because this tool has made me fearless mm. i'm not somebody that really <laughs> is comfortable in dialogue but i feel called to it um it helps it it's, I'm, we're ready to go in and, and address race relations, which um, is a, a whole nother topic and very hard to address. In three short meetings, um, and Dale, you were involved in, in some of this, we worked with a leadership team and it went from crying and emotions and anger to uh, safer expression and people starting to humble themselves to a third meeting where we're action oriented. We are implementing plans, steps. So this is not just talking about emotions. It moves us to action on the same page. And now the emotion is not in the way. Um, so, you know, that can apply to any of our businesses where we want to do it faster. We don't want you sitting in the emotion so long. So long. We want to move you to action. And, and this time in particular, as, as many of the audience know, my dad knew in March with Dr. King. And, and so during this time of racial conflict and, and other challenges, my dad is asked all the time to speak. And, and Janet helped to facilitate some dialogue with my dad. And, and, and there are many of you out there that, are, 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 that really want to talk about what's going on now, what's, what's going on, not only with, with racial relations, what's going on with, with COVID-19, what's going on in the future, and opening and closing things. Mm -hmm. This is the, better, I, the best time I've ever seen for people to really want to talk and, and do dialogue and, and, and structure dialogue and in, in this process. John, yes. did you want to comment? Are you going to say something? I, I, you uh, mentioned COVID-19. And one of the other things that we've been talking about and, and an area we want to help is with the return to work. Because mm. I, I think a lot of people there are so many different feelings about returning, whether it's safe for them or not safe for them. What will it look like? Will they be able to work in the same way with their colleagues that are there? How many of their colleagues will be able to be present at the same time? All of these uncertainties. Well, we, we know humans like routine and, and there are good reasons for that. It makes us efficient, actually. Mm -hmm. However, there is a ton of uncertainty that will continue to roll for quite a while. So again, taking for granted that I'll just show up and the people, team I've worked with will be intact and all this, and then it isn't, or there's plexiglass or there's, you know, you have to wear a mask. All of those things take a toll, distract us from what we hope to really achieve in, on a business, from a business perspective, um, can impede our relationships that we need to have functioning well to achieve the business purposes. So uh, the dialogue process can help there as well. And so can a reflective process like what you do in intelligent influence. So it, depending on what the circumstances are, that is a very self-reflective process that helps people realize where they stand, what's important to them, how they've come to the influences and beliefs they have. And that also can be a really helpful framework to help people get back to work in a conscious way, reduce the fear level, reduce their um, sense of resistance to the changes that might be rolled out for a while. Very, very well said. And, and one of the things that the audience may know that may or may not know the term onboarding. So typically when you get a senior person, you onboard them, you bring them in, make them comfortable with the organization. The term that's going around now is reboarding, where, 
where people who have been employees for a long time really are, 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 are trying to figure out how do I get back to work. And, and, and many people who have gone back have been overly tired because you have, it's a different energy level when you're acting with people than you're sitting at home yes. on a Zoom call. And so th any business that really is serious about getting up to speed quickly needs to go through this process. And Jenna, I know you have some thoughts about, about that. What, 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 what's your perspective? Well, I wanted to add um, attention to the owner. You know, mm -hmm. there's a lot of work we are doing with the management teams, the frontline employees. Um, we also start with the owner in a one-on-one -on -one, because it could be a lonely place mm -hmm. to be an owner, especially now. Especially now. Um, so we do one-on-one -on -one, um, and make it very safe for that owner to express well, what's really going on here. Mm -hmm. um, and then that is supported with working with the owner's management team and then the employees. So we'll, we cascade it throughout the organization, but we do not forget the one-on-one -on -one support to the owner yeah. to make it easy for that person to address the multiple levels of attention, including basic running of the business. Um, so most um, often that's part. where it's going to start. Right. right. Most often it's going to start with the owner and any close uh, team that they have so that so that we get we know where the business is oriented and what's important there. Well, well and anybody, we do a lot of work with owners and, and CEOs, and, and it's a lonely job. It's a very, very lonely job, especially now. And so, uh, unfortunately, these things go by so, so quickly. We're almost at the end of time. But I, I want the audience to understand. So, uh, you know, I wrote this book called Intelligent Influence, and we have this four step process that basically creates a safe space to help people understand that they're products of their influence which feeds perfectly into this dialogue process, which really opens people up to, be, to, to really understand that the burden isn't just on them. It's really on collaboration, on working together. And so in the, in the last minute or so, um, um, some final words. Um, um, John, I'll, I'll start with you, and we'll end with uh, Janet. John, final thoughts? Thank you. I've been on a quest for a couple of years to help my coaching clients to find more powerful ways to help them quicker uh, because they because the, the pace of business has increased so dramatically now we have another layer of complexity with how to handle the effects of the disease and potentially the human relations side of things right. so so I see the dialogue process as a very powerful tool to help in multiple circumstances with multiple dynamics in business. So I'm very excited to be working with Janet to bring that out and to help as many people as, as we can as quickly as possible. Well, John, thank you very much. Janet, final word? Yes, yes. Uh, building on the word collaboration because we do go in and work on collaboration between the owner and employees, the owner and their family. But this, the three people you know, on this uh, show right now, Dale, you know, with your business, John and mine, we are collaborating mm -hmm. and we're living it. We're applying the tools to do something that's kind of hard. You know, everybody says collaboration. It's hard. Right, right, right. <laughs> um, you know, it's a marriage that we're creating for the long term so we can really service with our, you know, combined talents. So I'm going to end with collaboration is the way and we're doing it and we're applying these tools so that it goes smoother and we get ready and serve faster. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, well, Janet and John, thank you so, so very much. I want to thank the audience for watching Family Business World, and we will uh, see you next week. Good luck.